right, hello, welcome back for those attending live to our fifth and final uh, episode in our series on how to grow your agency. Uh, my name is Jason Beyer. I lead marketing and partnerships at CrowdSpring. Uh, CrowdSpring helps agencies and business owners build their visual brand. All right, so let's jump into it. I have the uh, Francisco, the, the VP uh, of Business Development and Partnerships at White Shark Media. And White Shark's been in the game for, geez, what, 10 years? I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen all of their education for a while. Uh, he's going to talk to us about PPC. They, they've done a great job with, with their PPC products, being able to help agencies uh, help their clients. So, Francisco, great to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I've actually seen all these events from CrossBank before. So I've been a, a part of the audience in the past. Glad to be on the other side now. But yeah, no, excited awesome. to be here. Um, I think we have a good a good topic and we're going to have a good session for today. So excited. I mean, first of all, thank you for joining today's session. Like I mentioned, I'm excited to be here to talk a bit about uh, myself, Voice Media, but more importantly about our main topic today, which is PPC marketing um, and how PPC can actually help you not only boost your revenue as an agency, but also boost your overall success and relationship with clients. Um, before we jump into the agenda, just to tell you a bit about myself and Wireshark Media, I am part of the partnerships division within Wireshark, like Jason mentioned. We're a digital marketing agency. We've been around for 10 years. We started as a, as a PPC agency for the average SMB out there, and about four years ago, we started developing a white-label program to help other agencies manage and fulfill PPC. We started coming across a lot of agencies that wanted to enable PPC for their clients, but they didn't have the resources, maybe they were focused on other products or they didn't have the capacity. In a lot of cases, they had a PPC person that quit out of the blue and they couldn't replace them on time. So we built a program and we've been doing that for a while. And what that's helped us do is understand the market in a way where we understand the value of PPC and what it can bring to the table and also allocate all of our resources into really helping agencies enable PPC as a product, right? So what we're gonna be covering today is PPC and its role in an omni-channel strategy for a lot of agencies. We come across a lot of agencies that focus on providing SEO services, web development services, social media management, reputation management, but don't have too much experience with PPC. Um, and, and PPC is a tricky subject. In some situations, it's not that easy to understand how we can fit a bigger strategy or a bigger picture. So we're going to be talking about that, how it's a big, pretty important component of the client journey and how it can help develop an integrated user experience. For anyone looking for a service or product, it's usually a key element within their buyer journey. So we're gonna be talking a bit about that and how that can actually turn into developing and offering a profitable platform for agencies. So if, if PPC is not a product you're currently offering, but you're looking to offer it, you're actually getting clients or prospects asking about it. Um, we're gonna talk a bit about how profitable this can be if you have the right system and if you're able to enable it. So we're gonna cover that. Obviously, we're going to cover some challenges that can come when adding PPC. Again, it's not necessarily an easy product. It's very technical. So you do need to have some technical background and experience, invest some time in learning, training, understanding the new trends as well, because it's something that changes um, quite often. And also another big component of enabling PPC as part of your portfolio is learning how to sell it because you might have an existing portfolio that is actually interested in PPC. Maybe you're doing SEO for them or website management and they're asking about PPC. That's great. You already have a lead there. But if you want to scale the product and you want to scale the revenue side of PPC and offer it for more clients, you're going to have to learn how to sell it. And, and in order to do that, you're going to need some resources, some tools, and also understand the common objections, the added value that you can bring to the table with it and how to pitch it. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, also about the technical requirements, of course, uh, I think we're all part of the digital marketing industry. So we all understand how these digital products work. We all understand um, how technical they can get, uh, how deep we can get into the numbers, the platforms, etc. So we're going to talk a bit about that. And then we're going to close talking about some resources that you can have available, whether it's actually white labeling or outsourcing the PPC or finding some existing resources out there that can make the, the process of enabling PPC into your portfolio much easier. So, so we're going to get started. We're going to be talking about PPC as part of an omni-channel strategy. And obviously, as we all know, this is basically what a client journey looks like with time, especially in the last couple of years. And with COVID now, we've seen this client journey change more often than not. And what we're seeing now is a lot more touch points when someone's actually looking for a particular service or a product. 
we were, you know, if you start thinking about 10 or 15 years ago, when someone wanted to go and buy a particular product or look for a service, maybe they would have two or three touch points, especially if they weren't that integrated with internet and search engines and things of the sort, they would probably go to the store, look at a product, maybe ask someone for a review or a friend that already purchased the product to have an idea of how good or bad it was. And then they would eventually make a decision. But nowadays, the touch points in the client journey are, are significantly more. We, you know, we have 10, 15, 20 touch points, um, sometimes even more when we're talking about particular products. And it's important to understand the role of PPC in this journey. Um, before, there was this notion that digital products had a specific place in the journey. So you would think about one product for awareness. You would think about one product for consideration, one for retention, one for advocacy. But nowadays we see, you know, a complex client journey where you should have probably a lot of channels trying to target a lot of different touch points. And this is where PPC becomes pretty fundamental within the journey and understanding where it fits because within the PPC world, within all these types of campaigns with Google, Microsoft, or Facebook, you can actually target all these touch points at the same time. You can be present in every single one of them. You can have campaigns for awareness you can have campaigns for consideration. You can definitely have campaigns for purchase. And obviously you can have campaigns for retention and advocacy. So understanding how fundamental it can be to be present at each one of the touch points is, is one of the first elements that you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about enabling PPC. And also when you're thinking about discussing this particular scenario with your potential customers, whether it's an existing client or a prospect, right? Um, another key element of understanding the client journey and the role of PPC here is understanding that even though we have a blueprint and we know or we have an idea of how customers go through these sales funnels and what they look for and how many steps they take and, and what type of resources they go out and, and, and look for to understand where they can get the best product, there is one key element here that is more present nowadays, which is the adaptability and the flexibility of the journeys. Um, we were talking yesterday with one of our partners about the auto industry and the big shift that they've had in the past two years due to COVID, um, you know, auto dealers went from, you know, scheduling or tracking in-store visits and test drives within the dealership to actually having, you know, you're, you're now able to schedule a test drive at home and then someone will drive the car to your house and you can test drive it there. Um, the, the sales funnel and cycle for the auto industry has changed significantly because there's a shortage of vehicles basically across the entire world. So what would usually take you 30 to 60 days now can take you 90 to 120 days. So having a particular product that has the flexibility to change in a short period of time and to adapt to these changes in the consumer funnel and the sales funnel is extremely important. And again, this is one of the added values of PPC that you can easily adjust strategy, messaging, you know, you can tailor the specific messaging for different steps of the funnel. You can deliver the right message at the right time. And if the time changes, then you can change your message immediately. You can be strategic about actually delivering a message and trying to get this customer, right? So, so that's another key element within uh, PPC as part of the client journey, understanding the flexibility that it provides and how easy you can adapt it based on the changes that we're seeing in, in, in consumer psychology and how consumers are actually trying to purchase products in general, right? Um, another key element is obviously how PPC can play a role in the user experience. The idea with PPC and advertising in general, but paid campaigns in specific, is that you are sending the right message at the right time to the right audience. And this is the only way you're actually providing added value. If you're advertising for something or you haven't set up a campaign in a way where you're actually showing up for relevant consumers or someone high intent for your service or products, you're probably making a mistake and you're not adding value and you're going to be wasting a lot of money. The key here is to have the right message that is adding value to the customer. You're just not selling, but you have to add extra value as well because the market and the landscape is a lot more competitive. You have to be present at the right time. So if you want to make sure you capture consumers from the get-go, you have to be present from the first moment they're actually looking for your product. Um, you have to make sure that you're present throughout the journey as well so they don't drop off, so a competitor doesn't actually steal that sell, um, and that you understand how to be present in each one of the points, right? Also, you have to make sure that you're targeting the right audience, and this is one of the great capabilities of, of PPC marketing, that you have such a broad ability to target specific audiences. You're able to pinpoint 
you know, if you use search, you're able to pinpoint obviously people with high intent because you can focus on particular search terms, you know, someone looking for a very specific thing. Usually you would have very high intent when you target those keywords. But outside of that, um, most of the PPC players, so Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, they offer very, very complex audience targeting capabilities that allows you to target specific consumers, even if they haven't gotten to the point where they're looking for you. The great thing about the evolution of PPC marketing in the past, I would say two or three years, is that a lot of the audience algorithms have evolved pretty significantly. And now with all this change and shift in data collection and privacy, the platforms already have some, some sort of a solution where they can find high intent users and go after them um, and not necessarily wait for them to come to you. And being able to have this specific targeting method and being able to control it and get as niche as possible, especially if you have a niche service or product, is fundamental in having the right user experience, right? If we think about other targeting methods or other channels for marketing, um, and, and the example I always use is called email marketing, we get a lot of emails on a daily basis from people that are trying to reach out to us. And in a lot of cases, they're not relevant. We're not really potential consumers. They're offering us services that don't make sense for us. Obviously, they're just kind of trying to shoot out there and see what 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 bites, you know, with the with the email cadences. But in a lot of cases, they're not adding value. In a lot of cases, just being sent to spam, they're being blocked. Um, we get this perception of these companies that they don't understand who we are. They're not sending the right message to us. And eventually we get this just negative connotation of those companies not providing added value for us. With PPC, you can control that and you can avoid it. If you have the right setup, you have the right strategy, you're targeting the right people, you're not going to be showing up into someone's, you know, whether it's a search engine or a display network or anything of this, or you're not going to be showing up to someone that's not necessarily interested in your product. You're likely going to be showing up to people that should be looking for your product or will eventually have intent. And that's part of adding value to the user experience and making the journey a lot smoother as well for potential customers, right? Um, <clears throat> then it comes to, you know, if you want to add PPC as part of your offering, so let's say you understand the value that it brings to the client journey, you understand the potential, you understand that it can help increase sales, increase lead generation, et cetera. You have to understand the role that it plays within your agency and what it's going to mean if you start offering it. Um, also, you have to understand the added value. You know, when you're talking to potential customers, you have to understand how you can control costs and targeting with PPC and what comes with that, what type of metrics come with the tools as well, you know, what advertisers are looking for. You have to kind of rethink how you go about your potential advertisers and how you talk about strategy because this new tool means you have new capabilities that you can target different things and send different messages as well. So when you want to add PPC as part of your service offering, you have to first understand the nature and the core focus of the tools and of the networks in order to be able to service it efficiently and, and to offer it efficiently as well. But I can tell you, it's, it's a growing industry. We've been doing it for 10 years. Um, we actually ventured into other products as well in the past. You know, when we started selling PPC, we grew pretty quickly. And at one point we felt that it would be a good idea to be sort of a multi-channel, multi-service agency. So we launched SEO, we launched website management, we, we launch reputation management. And with time, we realized that scaling all these products wasn't that easy. So we took a step back and say, no, let's go back to PPC. Let's focus on what we're good at. Let's specialize at it and let's continue growing it. And for us, it was the right strategic decision because it's a huge market. And with COVID right now, especially with a lot of companies or usually relying more on more traditional marketing, jumping into the digital world, PPC is one of the biggest players out there. So offering the product and having it as part of your portfolio and your service offering can be key as well in terms of adding revenue to your agency and being competitive as well when you're offering the rest of your services to, to other customers, right? The idea is that if you start offering PPC, you're going to be able to offer a profitable product that's bringing more revenue to your agency, but it's also providing more revenue to your clients. Why? Because the more revenue and added value you provide to your clients, the more likely they are to stay with you the more likely they are to spend more money on management fees and to actually just develop a longer relationship, therefore inc increasing their lifetime value. Um, here, I, I, I'm pretty sure that everyone in this particular session right now understands um, what churn, you know, how churn can impact an agency and how terrible it is to lose a client because maybe you were missing one component of the added value or you were doing a great job, but you know the results weren't there. Adding PPC as an extra product is one extra tool you have to be able to add profitability to your clients, 
to retain them, to keep them happy, and to provide them just more solutions so they can actually reach their goals, right? So understanding that and understanding that role of PPC as, as part of the client journey and how it can bring added value to your clients is key before you include it in your portfolio. It's important to understand how it fits and what it can and cannot do as well. But if you've gotten past this point and you're ready to go, you've done PPC in the past, maybe you do PPC, you just can't scale it, or you want to start doing it and you want to jump you know, into the water and see and test it out for yourself, you have to understand what comes with adding the product. And because it's a very technical product and it's a very, very, very competitive industry, there are certain challenges that you need to keep in mind because the entry barriers are not that low and you're going to have to invest some time and resources to be able to offer the product efficiently. One of the first challenges is before getting PPC clients is learning how to sell PPC and how to actually get clients. If you go ahead and decide to make an investment, maybe you want to hire an in-house person to manage your PPC portfolio because you have a good existing portfolio and you want to start offering PPC because you see the value of, of the revenue and, and how you can increase the added value for a client. Um, you're going to have to learn how to sell it. You might invest in all these resources and prepare to start offering the product, but you don't have the demand or the clients at hand, right? Um, the easiest entry here is to offer PPC to existing clients. That's usually what most of our, the agencies that we work with come to us for. They usually have an existing portfolio. They're doing SEO, website management, reputation management, social media management. They say, hey, Frank, um, I have clients that are interested in PPC management. I don't offer it yet, but I want to offer it because I'm already giving them three or four more products. So I want to be you know, the provider for all the services so I can have a better relationship. Can you help me out? This is usually the best scenario if you want to start working with some clients, working with your existing clients and finding your initial clients that will help you establish a portfolio, right? Um, part of the process is going to be showcasing to your clients how you can customize the strategy to their particular solutions. And that's another great thing about the product that you can really customize the product construct and you can customize the strategy to make sure that you're focused on their particular goal, their particular needs. If you have a client that's looking to just expand awareness, then you can build a strategy for that. If you're looking for a client that you know wants to expand um, their reach because maybe they're capped with SEO or they just revamped the website but they're not getting enough traffic, then you can customize the strategy for that and you can make sure that you offer the right solution and the right added value, right? Obviously, this process comes with a lot of objections. Uh, you're going to come across a lot of clients that are saying, hey, I've tried PPC in the past and it didn't work, or hey, my industry is too niche, or um, you know what, it's too expensive because paying the spend and paying a management fee is just going to, it adds up and the ROI is in there. I'm not going to be able to afford it. So understanding that you need to have the foundation to tackle all these objections is key. And we're going to talk about some resources that can help you with that. But the first step is understanding that you need to build a plan in order to sell the product. Once you've, you know, if you've gone over your portfolio, you've been able to add this, this revenue stream to, to some of your clients and you want to continue growing it, you have, you're going to have to go a bit more outbound and actually go after different prospects and try to grow it in a way where you can justify the investment you're making on the tools, you're making on the resources, et cetera. And, and this comes with some challenges, right? And we're going to talk about some solutions and some resources you have available to tackle this. So I want to jump in real quickly before you move on from here, because I, I, to get a little bit more concrete with some examples, because I think this is this is great. This is where, you know, it, it adds a lot of frustration and anxiety and complications to add a new service, right? You've explained that it's helpful. And uh, as you know, from watching all the earlier sessions, what we've been talking about is we're, we're focusing on the client's uh, business. We're trying to increase business for them. And it may be outside of our core uh, experience, but we, we want to make sure that if we see a, a, a leak, we can plug it, we can fix it, we can help them. So I think we understand the benefit, but this aspect of selling something new um, can be a little bit daunting, especially if you don't have a lot of experience doing it. And I know you're going to get into later, you know, some of the tools that, that make it simple, you know, but one thing to think about is how can PPC uh, just augment your core solution that you're doing, right? So if you're running a webinar or running a webinar series, uh, you might be partnering with, with folks for that, or you might be sending it to your audience. How can you run a test with that client, you know, to, to drive some registrations for that? Or you're in website development, you create a new landing page or, or product, set aside a little bit of a budget 
to run an A-B test real quick and to see, you know, what elements are converting. There's ways to introduce PPC to your clients and to yourself and to your agency uh, that augment your core solution. And then you can start rolling them out more broadly for more of the prospecting campaigns that we're more familiar with. Uh, but I think one of the great ways to start is just augmenting your core service if it's not if it's not PPC. Yes, and that's usually what we recommend to most of our partners. You know, if you have an existing client base and you're going to start offering PPC, you don't have to position yourself as the biggest, greatest PPC agency in the world, right? You can start with your existing clients and you can, if you have a good relationship with them and you've been working with them for a while, you can be transparent about it and say, hey, I'm actually thinking about including PPC as part of my offering. Um, I've actually invested in some resources. I hired a PPC manager. I'm actually working, you know, on some tools to be able to manage PPC campaigns. I would like to discuss the possibility of testing some of these campaigns with you. If it's an existing client, you can offer a free trial. You can offer a discounted price. The idea is that you can get some experience with some of the clients that you have at hand to establish a, at least a base portfolio, right? That's going to help you sustain the investment that you make when you want to offer it and also get more experience because at the end of the day, like any other product, if you don't have experience and you're jumping into the market and trying to offer it, you're going to make mistakes, you know, and, and it's going to be tricky to get to the point where you want to be and, and to become an expert, right? If you want to do it yourself at least and you want to do it in-house. So the easiest, safest way is to start with existing clients. And if you have a strategy, you know, let's say you're managing SEO and you have a particular strategy for SEO, you know, the keywords at work, you know, what they want to rank for, then that's where you can start the test and say, Hey, you know what? We've capitalized on this strategy. We're number one position for your top five services and keywords. But I see that your competitors are actually advertising for these keywords. So even though we're number one organically, there's still two or three ads on top of us. And I'm thinking we should test some ads here. Let's start with a small branded campaign. It's fairly easy to manage, fairly easy to put out there. And let's see the results and how we can capitalize there. And as we're getting results and as we're seeing the traction, we can gradually expand it. We would always recommend taking this one step at a time. Don't jump into the waters if you don't have the experience, but obviously you have to start somewhere and, and, and you know, find the resources available, find the people that have done it in the past and that can help so you can be successful, right? If you do it with an existing client base, the chances that it goes well are significantly high because you know the client, you know their needs, you know their strategy, you communicate with them uh, on a constant basis. So, so it's good to start the test there, right? And obviously I'm as you go and develop the service, you're going to learn more about selling it and, and the roadblocks that come across and how to tackle them as well. I'm really glad you mentioned branded because that's got to be the easiest, safest way to get into this. So if, if folks don't know, you've undoubtedly seen this as a consumer, uh, but, but may not have recognized it. You can rank number one, as Francisco mentioned, for your brand name, you know, CrowdSpring, White Shark Media, but you can get buried you know, one to two spots by somebody else coming in and purchasing the ability to rank for that term, for that branded name. And so these branded campaigns are very simple to set up because you're, you, there's only one keyword. There's two keywords. It's just the branded term. And you know, you're, it's rough. There's, there's arguments back and forth on, you know, should you pay for something that you're already ranking very highly for? And, you know, we've decided internally, and, and I'm sure Francisco agrees, yes. I mean, it's worth paying for that because if somebody, it might feel unfair, but if somebody is outranking you in some way, shape or form because they're paying for it, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a loss. So that's probably the easiest one to set up because it's, uh, it's somebody directly looking for your company and you're only using one to two keywords. Yeah, no, and I mean, there's a, just like you mentioned, there's a huge debate about brand campaigns uh, it's a fun one. It's, it's been a couple of years where people have been debating back and forth whether to do it or not. Uh, we are pro branded campaigns because we've seen the results and we've seen how it works. And, you know, we were just talking about. Customers. You're also biased though, Francisco. <laughs> of course, of course I'm biased, yeah. I'll tell you what happens with our clients and we've seen it over and over again. Right. Um, let's say you're offering a service and then let's say you're a plumber and then you want to offer your services out there. And then someone looks for a plumber near me, you show up. They go and they click on your ad, they go into your website, they like what they see, but they want to do some market research. They leave your website, they do some market research. And then the next day they're like, no, I actually like the first guy that I looked at, right? So let me go back and look for them directly, look for their brand so I can go into the website. So this prospect with extreme high intent, like they literally just want to get to your website to contact you, types your brand and they see a competitor ad that is extremely targeted just to capitalize on that intent. So it's an ad that says, 
hey, are you looking for mic plumbing? You know what? I actually offer better prices and I'll give you a better service. And this is why you should choose me over them. And that split second, what that high intent prospect is going to see is your competitor controlling the message that goes around your brand. So there is and now there's doubt. Competitor is controlling what someone sees when they look for you. It sounds like, you know, it sounds unfair and it sounds silly, but it works. People capitalize on that. It's a huge debate, but it happens. The advantage of obviously bidding for your brand is it's a lot cheaper for you than your competitors. The way Google works and the way Microsoft works is you have a quality score that determines your cost per click. And because you are the most relevant authority for that keyword, Google will make it cheaper for you to advertise. So if you're paying 50 cents to show up there versus your competitor who's paying four or five dollars, it's definitely worth it to be there. You know, it's definitely worth it to capitalize on that. And what happens all the time is we come across uh, our clients accounts and they're not doing any branded campaigns. We add their brand and then we wait three or four weeks and then we look at the search insights and then we show them who's bidding on their brand and how aggressive they are and how often they show up in the first position and they freak out. They completely freak out because they're not even aware that they're being, let's say, attacked, right, or targeted and that their brand is being used by someone else. A lot of them feel it's illegal. And I'm like, no, if they're not actually putting your name and brand in the ad copy, it's not illegal. They can they can actually target you. So, so that's a key element when you want to set a strategy, right, especially obviously if you're a big brand. But um, if you're a small brand and you're trying to build some awareness, then then you should definitely keep it in mind. But yeah, yeah I, I agree with you 100 percent. I mean, we we uh, we have fallen on the pro side as well uh, at, at CrowdSpring just internally. Uh, it's just painful because it's, you know, it's annoying to have to spend money on a term that you've already you know spent resources to rank for free for through SEO and through your strong product. Uh, you know, reputation in the industry. Uh, but yeah, I would agree. I'm pro as well. Uh, but yeah, perfect. All right. What else you got for us? Yeah, no. And I mean, this ties into to this particular slide that we're looking at, right, which is the strategy. So let's say now you know how to sell PPC. OK, now you know how to <laughs> you know how to get the client through the door and you got them on board before you think about running campaigns. And before you think about doing all the technical work, you need to build a strategy. And sure, you have an experience. You're an agency. You probably offer digital products and you understand what a marketing strategy is. But how do you trickle that down to the specific channels that you're going to work on? Right. Our recommendation for agencies that are just starting off is focus on a particular vertical industry and specialize, learn everything you need to know about that industry, build the blueprint, understand what works and what doesn't, and then go for it. So when you're coming across prospects and you're talking to them, you're an expert, not only in the technical side, which is managing the campaign, setting it up, tracking, et cetera, but you're an expert in their industry, their client journey, what the voice should be like, what the brand should be like, what the story should be like in the ad copy what people use to look for your products, what keywords don't work, you know? You need to understand all of that before you start thinking about creating an account because if you don't have the right foundation, money can be spent pretty quickly without getting results. That's the thing about PPC. You're paying for the clicks and you're paying for the traffic. If the, if the setup isn't right, you're going to spend a lot of money at first. And yes, testing is necessary. Testing is great. You're not going to be able to capitalize on PPC from day one, at least in most cases but you do need to have a solid foundation. So you need to specialize in a particular industry or vertical, at least that's what we recommend. You need to be goal driven. If you're gonna provide a strategy for a client, you need to start with their goal. What is your goal? So are you looking for profitability? Are you looking to increase reach and awareness? Are you looking for more leads? Are you looking for more sales? Are you looking for more bookings? Do you prefer phone calls versus contact forms? How does your website work? Who's your competitor? Can you work outside of your geo? All these things need to come in place before you can actually think about launching an account. And this requires time and understanding the bigger picture and the omni-channel approach. And this is more the theory that comes with PPC, right? You can be trained on how to set up an account, how to, you know, install tracking codes and install everything that you need to do in order to launch an account. But if you don't understand the client, the market and their journey, then whatever you do is probably not going to be that efficient. So you need to invest time in doing this in studying markets, understanding the needs of the consumers for your particular client before you can start working on the technical part. And this is usually a challenge, especially if you don't offer that many digital products because you're not, you might not be used to doing that in the past. If you only do, let's say, reputation management, you might not be fully aware of the bigger picture that the client needs and you're going to have to spend some time there as well um, in order to understand the bigger picture, right? 
But Francisco, this is how we as agencies can stand out, right, against the consumer. Because as we keep talking about through all these presentations, tools don't make you an expert, right? Design tools don't make you a designer. SEO tools don't make you an SEO expert. PPC tools don't make you an expert in, in paid media. Uh, but that's what we can do as uh, adding value as an agency. So instead of the client saying, well, I can learn real quick how to set this up. I know my geography. I know my you know, basic information about the business. Yes, they can do that, but they're going to lose a lot more money quicker than the fee they're going to pay the agency who already knows how to do this. Right. And so that's what we're trying to, to do is we're trying to be the experts for the clients. Exactly. And you're going to come across several industries that have very specific needs that you need to be aware of if you want to be an expert within the industry. The legal industry is a perfect example. If you look at legal campaigns and you think about what is commonly known as PPC best practices and what most PPC gurus will tell you are the do's and don'ts within the legal industry, most of that doesn't make sense. There's a lot of weird things that you see in legal campaigns, but you see it because they work, you know, in, in the legal industry, it works to kind of go out and think outside the box. If you don't have experience with that industry and you go with your basic, you know, PPC knowledge and training, you might miss that or the auto industry for that matter, you know, auto dealers, they work with co-op budget, but did that come from the brands that has specific regulations in the ad copy? If you don't know that and you run an ad for a client without knowing what you can and cannot write on that ad, you're going to get suspended in a minute. And then the client's going to lose 10, 20, $30,000 in marketing budget for that month because you made a mistake just because you don't understand that, you know, you can't put a specific percentage or there is a certain way of doing the geo targeting for an auto client, right? And all those things are more on the strategical side and understanding the vertical rather than the technical configuration of the account. So, so that's really where the added value comes. You're paying me to do technical work, but it's not just about the technical implementation. It's about understanding if the technical implementation is going to make sense based on the goals that you have as a client, right? And once you get that down, once you have that solid foundation in terms of market knowledge and strategy, then comes the technical part, right? Because the technical part isn't easy either. Um, these products are very technical. You need to become very product savvy if you want to manage them correctly. These are not necessarily client facing platforms. You know, they're not built for someone who doesn't have experience in the digital marketing world to just go in there and manage them. Google, Microsoft and Facebook do offer a lot of automated kind of watered down products. So if you're a, you know, again, a dentist and you want to run your advertising campaign and you don't want to pay someone to do it, there's probably a fully automated feature that you can use with Google and that's going to get you some results. But if you want to grow, so if you want to efficiently scale the lead generation from that particular channel, or if you want to, you know, get four or five X growth in terms of revenue, or you're a big company and you need to actually expand and have more of a complex approach, you're going to need the technical knowledge. And this comes with training. You have to take the Google, Microsoft and Facebook certifications. You obviously have to develop your experience. You have to know how to manage the accounts. All these channels have so many updates throughout the year. If there's anyone here that offers SEO, you know perfectly well how Google can get in terms of changing algorithms, in terms of changing the technical workflows and basically how platforms work. So you basically have to constantly train yourself and this takes time and you really have to become a technical expert. Another reason why you have to have your technical knowledge on point is if you're managing, you know, let's say you have, you have an existing portfolio and you offer to manage a PPC account and you're already managing website and landing pages and SEO for them, and you start managing their account, and maybe you don't have the technical knowledge, but you're just making the jump, someone else is going to reach out to them and offer the same services you're offering, at least the PPC management. And they're going to go in, they're going to offer a free audit, they're going to go into the account, and they're going to trash you. They're going to see that maybe you're not following best practices, that you're not following the best technical guidelines. And when they do that, your existing customer it's not only not going to be happy about what you're doing for PPC, but now you have, you know, you're running the risk of them leaving any other service they have with you because there's a lot of PPC agencies out there that they start offering PPC. And once they get PPC, they go after the SEO, the website management and the, all the other services. So in terms of retention, how you manage your portfolio, whether you offer PPC or not, if they're exposed to another agency offering this service that you don't currently offer that you're not good at, they're always at risk of leaving you, even if you're really good, because clients tend to want to centralize management under one company or one agency, right? At least most of the smaller clients that like to do that because they don't want to have different points of contact. They don't want to have to pay four or five, six different bills. They don't want to have to, 
you know, explain the strategy and what, you know, basically everything that's behind your service and the product to four or five different people. They want one partner, one ally to offer everything. That's usually the norm. So you know, I, hadn't, you, I hadn't thought about people uh, doing the audit because, yeah, that's very common, right? If there's somebody trying to take business away from you, they're going to run a quick audit. I mean, this tells me it's so important for strategy and to start smaller if you're just getting into this. Because when I hear this now, I was, you know, I'm, 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 I'm excited you know, about the potential of, of launching something like this. But now you just gave, you know, this this bomb that somebody's going to come in and offer a, a free review that is that is trash, potentially trashing me. You know, yeah. if I'm a little bit risk averse, I'm like, OK, it's just not worth it. Why not just focus on my SEO, my social media, my email marketing, the core of my agency? And this is why I would say, like, I, I, was, I want to leave with a little bit of hope on, on this is that, yeah. you know, own one of these strategies, pick something small, like branded or something small to kind of work into if it's your first time and really understand the technical aspect. And that way, if there is something like one of these free brand audits, you know, they, they can't they can say you're missing opportunities and you can tell the client, yeah, we you know, we're not there yet. We're not ready um, between the two of us in our relationship, but they're not going to be able to trash the thing that you own, you know, branded something simple you own it um yeah that's pretty amazing i i wanted to go on a quick rant but francisco you never take a breath in your in your in your speech so i couldn't jump in but <laughs> I, I, I wanted to i wanted to point out you know this really bothers me when i see google's notifications about things that they want me to change in my account and it's all self-serving for google like it's like no i don't want to do that because like they, they give you these warnings of like, you know, you, you need, this is missing, you know, you've got to do this. Uh, you've got to take advantage of this missing audience. And yeah. it makes it sound like I really need to, like I need to take action on this. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is I know my audience better in order to, you know, to spend less money. Google's job is to get you to spend more money. And so if you or your client doesn't have that technical background, you're just, you know, looking at what Google's telling you to do, you're going to very quickly uh, spend through a budget. Yes. And I mean, if, if we want to have that transparent conversation, um, a lot of the recommendations that you see when you're managing accounts, um, a lot of them can probably get you more traffic. But at the end of the day, you're but we're looking for better traffic. We're ultimately yeah, looking exactly. for conversions. We're not exactly. Google trying to give you traffic and I'm looking for conversions, you know, and that's the difference. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, <clears throat> if we understand Google, this is this is really their core business, right? Like they're, they're out there to make more money through advertising. It's normal that they're going to somehow sure. always recommend that you invest more money into their platform. It's natural. This is their business model. I think it's a great business model. I just want people to be aware that you've got to know when to say, nope, it's not for our client. It's not for our yeah. business. Yeah, no, and we get that a lot. Um, I mean, all the accounts that we manage, right? We get all these recommendations and clients come to us and say, hey, Google, just send me a super red flag saying that my account is at risk because I haven't added uh, 50 extra keywords, right? And then it's up to us to educate the client and say, hey, listen, out of these 50 extra keywords, two or three make sense, but the other ones, they don't make sense because we already have this approach. And because if we do this, we're going to be exposed to lower quality leads, et cetera. That takes time, but we need to understand and be able to tell apart what a best practice is, what Google recommends and what you should actually do for the client. We strongly believe in the Google product, the Microsoft products and their methodology, we're Google partners, we're Microsoft partners. So we align with their best practices and their product and the workflow, but we have our own way of doing things based on our experience. And we've learned what works and what doesn't for a client. And these are not one size fits all platforms and, and recommendations, right? For some clients, that might make sense. For others, they don't. Um, and it's all about having the technical knowledge and the technical background to be able to tell which one will actually make sense and which one won't make sense for your client. And leading into this subject as well is, okay, so you have the strategy, you have uh, the clients, you're getting the leads, you have the technical knowledge. Now it's time to get the performance. Now it's time to get the campaign going. And the favorite word for most clients out there when they talk about paid advertising is, what is the return on the investment? Where is the return on the spend that I'm putting into these campaigns? And this is a very tricky subject for anyone running PPC campaigns. Why? Because in a lot of cases for a lot of clients, it's very transparent. If you're talking about the e-com industry, you can track revenue that's coming directly from PPC campaigns. So you can get the return on investment as a specific exact number to the dot. 
if you have tracking in place and it's set up correctly and and everything is set up in the way that it should be in terms of the attribution models and which conversions you're tracking and everything of the sort and you have an e-com client it's extremely easy to showcase the return on investment for their campaigns as long as their sales funnel is pretty simple but i'll give you an example where things might not be that transparent if you have a client that has a high ticket item and they let's say they sell luxury watches and you know you have branded campaigns and you have campaigns targeting rolex and omega and patek philippe and all those expensive watches the journey to buy one of those watches is extremely long and in most cases the purchase doesn't happen online it happens at the store so you might have someone finding your store online when they look for a specific you know uh, uh, uh rolex daytona they find your ad they go into your your website they see the pricing they check it out then they leave, they check out your competitors, then you remarket them with a display ad, they see the watch and then they finally make the decision and they say, okay, I'm just gonna go into the store and then give it a look and you know wear it and see how it fits and then I'll eventually buy it. And then they go and they buy it. That purchase is not gonna show up in your PPC campaigns. You're never gonna know if you don't understand the buying cycle that that came because someone found you through an ad. So when this client comes to you and says, so I've invested $10,000 and I don't see a single purchase on the website. Then you have to have the conversation of, yeah, someone buying a $30,000 watch will likely not process that payment through a website. They'll probably go into your store. But if we hadn't run these ads, they probably would have never made it to the store because they would have been caught by somebody else and your brand wouldn't have been there when he was actually looking for that. And that's where it gets really sticky. And that's where all the elements that we just discussed come into place. You, you need the technical knowledge and the technical experience to be able to track revenue and conversions efficiently. But if you don't have the strategy in place and you don't understand the market, you might have a hard time, you know, bringing and understanding the added value for the client. It's the same if you're talking about lead generation. If I can get you 10 phone calls, but your conversion rate on those phone calls is 10%, so one out of 10 you're closing, and then your average revenue per phone call closed is lower than what you're investing on PPC, the ROI is not gonna be there. And you're gonna keep investing money, generating 10, 15, 20, 30 phone calls, but the ROI might not be there. And if I don't understand that, and I don't understand your journey and your cycle, I'm gonna make you waste money and you're eventually gonna churn because you're not gonna see the added value. I'm not gonna be able to communicate it. And at the end of the day, I'm not actually gonna give you a return on investment. So understanding the tracking, having everything in place set up is extremely important. It's a very transparent platform. You can see where your money is going, what works and what doesn't. But if you tie this to the buyer journey and to the buyer cycle, that's where you can really understand the return on investment. And this is where you need to have the clear and transparent communications with your client. And then this ties to the last roadblock that we usually see, which is communication and how important it is that once you have everything in place in terms of PPC management and, and just everything around how to put it out there to the market that you can communicate it efficiently and i don't have to preach to the audience today the importance of communication with clients because we all know how important it is but this is a particular storytelling process that you need to fine tune so you can have the right blend of showcasing data showcasing kpis but tying that to the bigger picture tying that to the specific client goals and tying that to the added value that's coming from the platform. In a lot of cases, communication is just as important, if not more important than the actual technical account management. And in a lot of cases with a lot of clients, when we go through rough patches, when we go through seasonality, you know, maybe there is a particular event that's hurting the sales. If you have the right communication strategy and the client's aware of what you're doing, they understand the added value regardless of the results, and they see that you have a plan and that you understand their industry, they'll stay around and they'll stick around. We've had clients that have had, you know, issues with their industry for months, but they stay because they understand the process and we have a clear line of communication. We're transparent about communication. We show them the numbers. We don't hide away from the results. We don't hide away when we have any issues and we're always proactive about, you know, a plan of action to fix whatever needs to be fixed. And we're proactive about growth opportunities as well. So you might have the technical experience. You might be able to sell the client. You might be able to understand the strategy, but if you don't have the right communication skills, you don't have the tools, the reporting, the dashboard and everything you need to pitch the added value to the customer, you might be getting clients, but then after three or four months, they're going to leave because they're not going to understand what you're doing. They're not going to be seeing what's happening with their campaigns. So this is just as important as everything else in, in this particular session of Roblox. 
And this is something that you need to keep in mind. The advantages that most agencies here and most, you know, established digital marketing agencies are great at communicating, right? If, if you're a big agency or if you're a small agency, but you know, you're good, you're getting good reviews and you're good with your clients, it's most likely because you're good at communicating. So this is something that can be easily tackled as long as you understand how to bring the PPC conversation into the mix and how to put everything out there so the client understands the added value, right? So, so those are usually the main roadblocks that we find. If you, you know, if you've been sticking to the session so far, you might be at a place where you say, you know, Jason, you just said it, this is too hard. This is not going to be worth it, right? Like, I mean, you're telling me I have to be an expert. You're telling me I have to learn about PPC strategy. I have to sell it. Uh, I have to hire people. I have to, you know, get a reporting dashboard. I have to learn how to communicate it. And it, it's true. I'm, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that it's not that easy to bring PPC as a product if you want to do it yourself and if you want to start from scratch. And that is why we have different recommendations for clients. We don't always recommend, you know, depending on the type of agency you are and the experience you have in the industry, we have different recommendations. One of the biggest recommendations we have, and that's really the reason why we developed our own program, is that you consider if you want to start offering PPC from scratch and you have no experiences, go to someone that has the experience. Go to someone that can provide the services, whether it's in a white label format or maybe even a referral program and you get some revenue out of it so you can learn the product, so you can understand how it works, so you can spend more time communicating with the customer, but you don't have to take on the load of the technical knowledge, the strategy, et cetera, because that takes time and that's going to take resources and investment. If you have the resources, if you have the time and you have the background, then it's great. You can hire PPC strategists, you can hire sales representatives that know how to sell PPC, you can bring clients on board, and then you're going to spend some time operationally developing processes, et cetera, invest in some tools. You can do all of it. It's not impossible. There's thousands of agencies offering PPC out there. But if you don't want to start from scratch and go through the challenge and you have opportunities that are low hanging fruits and you want to capitalize on them, you can always consider outsourcing or white labeling your PPC. We white label other services, not PPC ourselves, obviously, because we offer that, but we white label other services, whether it's client facing services or internal services as well for us. And we outsource them because we see the value of working with specialized agencies. We see the value of working with someone that knows the ins and outs, has the experience, and they just, you know, they have it down. They've been working on that for a while, and we don't have to invest the time and resources into learning the product from scratch and trying to scale it. That's going to help you decrease churn rate. It's going to be more efficient. It's an easy way to boost revenue because, you know, you have a fixed cost. You can easily put a margin to it and then just grow it. And in a lot of cases, it will just help you scale the product more efficiently. You don't have to worry. You know, let's say you're starting to sell PPC. Let's say you've hired some sales reps and you're starting to sell the product um, and it's going well. And then you have a strategist that's working on the accounts. And then one month you sell 20 more clients and then your strategy is capped. You know, they they can't manage more clients because they're, they're managing already a pretty large portfolio. Then you have this dilemma where you have to recruit, hire, train if they're not trained on the product. And if they are trained on the product, you know, they they still need at least to adjust to your particular sessions and, and, and processes and, and how you do things, et cetera. And then you have to bring them on board. You have to you know, give them an office space, you have to pay for the services, you know, everything in terms of just bringing them as part of your company, you have to go through all of that just to be able to expand the revenue for that PPC market, right? Or that PPC product. Then let's say you do that. And then a month two, something happens and you have significantly high churn. So now you're losing four or five clients in that particular month. And now you have two people, but they're not capped. So now you're not fully using your resources. And that's a very common scenario when you're starting out. And that's usually what we would recommend. If you're thinking of scalability and you want to go aggressive, invest more time in learning how to sell the product and communicate it, but don't invest that much in the technical resources at first. Work with someone that can help you and that has the experience with it. Once you find that partner, you also have to consider the software. And this is a big dilemma always in the PPC world the balance between automation and human work. We believe in a, in a healthy hybrid where we use automation tools to be more efficient and to provide added value. But whoever drives the plane or drives the car has to be a human. And we don't believe in set and forget accounts. We don't believe in, you know, the cookie cutter, uh, just click one button and let the software manage the account because 
marketing and, and, and just the consumer journey doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like algorithms make it seem like they do sometimes. Algorithms are great. They can analyze data and make better decisions if you're talking about aggregate numbers and things of the sort. But an algorithm will probably never be able to write a better ad copy than a person that understands context, that understands the human nature, that understands messaging as well. So it's extremely important to understand the balance, but it's also important that you know where to find the software in the automation that can be efficient. If you can automate, for instance, certain aspects of PPC management, like bid management or like budget pacing, then you should go for it because this takes time and the machines are really good at it. But you shouldn't be thinking about automating ad copy creation or you shouldn't be thinking about automating keyword selection because this requires human input. It requires that you understand the bigger picture and the strategy. So you have to do the, the due diligence in terms of software, but there's a lot of great tools out there. We use a lot of great tools ourselves. We use Optimizer, we use Kenshu, we use uh, Aquisio. We've used different tools out there. We use called tracking metrics to track things. We use Taptic. We use a bunch of tools that help us be more efficient, but that also give us the room to be able to have the human hand driving the car and dictating the strategy as well, right? And then the last element that I would that I would suggest in terms of resources that you could go to is when you're talking about selling PPC, which is the first step that you need, right, to bring the product on board, is Go look for tools that can help you sell. And this is something that not too many agencies do, and they go through the struggle of relying on the sales reps to do all the work, but they don't realize that there's a lot of tools out there that can help. We've developed a lot of ourselves for internal use. We share some of those with our partners because we understood how tricky it can be to sell a product and how long it can take to sell. For instance, when we're talking about the audit right, right there, um, auditing an account is one of the most efficient ways to sell PPC. You can have access to the existing account. You can usually see what's working, what isn't, and they can also see actually what happens, you know, what you can improve and where the added value is. Right. But if you have a tool that can, instead of having you do a manual audit, that will take you three or four hours. If you can actually have a tool that can automate the audit for you and do it in a minute, that's going to save you time and it's going to make it easier for your sales reps. Also, if you have a tool that can help you automate the proposal as well, it's going to save you time and it's going to help your sales rep focus on finding more opportunities. If you have a tool that can train you on new products so you can learn how to pitch a new feature or a new product from any one of the networks, then all of that can help make your process more efficient. Not too many agencies do this. Not too many agencies think about the sales process and finding tools for the sales process. But if you want to think in terms of scalability and you want to jump into the product the easiest and fastest way possible, this is fundamental and this is something we would recommend to every single agency that's looking to include PPC as part of their product offering, right? So I think with that, um, we conclude the bigger picture here. We conclude basically the main topic that we wanted to cover today, which is how PPC can add revenue, can add value to your agency, can add revenue for your clients. It can become a new revenue stream for you. I did want to make it clear that you're going to find some roadblocks, that there's going to be some difficulties when you jump into the PPC waters, but hopefully with some of the resources we discussed, you're going to be able to find pretty quick and easy, almost turnkey solutions that are going to help you jump into the market as soon as possible. And it's going to provide added value for your company and your agency, right? Again, PPC is a key element of any omni-channel strategy. So if you're offering a strategy for a client, PPC is a must. If you understand the client journey, you can understand how relevant PPC can be. If you want to offer PPC as a product, it's extremely profitable. If you find a good partner or you find a good model, you can have a good markup on these products and not only get more revenue from offering the service, but also because of the added value that you're adding to the client and, you know, increasing the lifetime volume of that particular client as well. So this is what I had to share for today. Um, Justin, I, I don't know if you have anything else that you want to be able to, to discuss today. Because I saw Justin said something about being held up. I think it was in regards to the recording. Jason, we're going to be sharing this recording, right? Yep, yep. And I responded to Justin as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a really fun recording. I mean, uh, it was a lot of off-the-cuff conversation outside of the presentation, which I like. And I think it, it gets into a little bit of the value. You led with a lot of value in terms of how we how we can set these, these campaigns up. So as we're wrapping up, if it, anybody has any final questions, feel free to to drop them in chat. Uh, one of my questions would be, you know, this aspect of, of charging. Obviously, we didn't get into it, and it's very yeah. bespoke to each uh, uh, scenario. 
Um, but do you have resources where, where folks can read a little bit more on how to potentially, you know, charge in this advertising setting? I mean, there's there's the there's the model where you just you know charge a, a flat rate or you you pay per ad spend. It's probably going to depend on on your scenario. Where can folks learn a little bit more about that aspect? Yeah, we have resource. I think we've put out a couple of blog posts about this. And I actually, in all honesty, I included it in the presentation at the beginning, but then I took it out because it's a pretty large subject. What I can tell yeah. you from experience is. Um, we've tried basically any pricing model that you can think of. We've done flat fees, we've done hourly rates, we've done percentages, et cetera. Our conclusion is, and this is what we recommend to our partners is you should always offer a model that brings more revenue in when you do more work for the client. And a lot of people miss that. That sounds pretty simple, right? And logical, but a lot of people miss that. And I'll tell you why in some models, we have partners offering flat fees for clients. Uh, and they say, hey, um, if your spend is between $5,000 and $15,000, uh, we're going to charge a flat fee of $1,000, right, for management. Um, and the client starts with $5,000 as a budget, right? But then they want to expand and then they give you an extra 10 k and they say, I want to now launch my product and my campaigns in 15 different locations. And you have a flat fee, but now you're going to be running 15 new campaigns for 15 new different locations, which is going to require significantly more work. And you're going to be charging the same. You can do that if you're a boutique agency and you have more of a bigger package type of approach. But if you're going to scale the product, you're going to run into issues if you don't have a model where you have a clear cut package of the amount of work that you do and the cost versus growing that package and charging more money. Ourselves, when we charge our partners or our direct clients, we have budget brackets. So we recommend having budget brackets that come with specific level of work. And as the budget grows, you just gradually grow the management fee. And then for bigger clients, you usually have custom pricing because they tend to be custom products, right? Uh, you can have a client spending $80,000 on one single branded campaign if they're a big brand. And then you can have a client spending $80,000 on a 200 location franchise, right? So the pricing for those two shouldn't be the same because the level of work is not going to be the same. But for smaller clients, we usually try to tie it to budget because more budget means more work. And that's usually a healthy scenario where you're charging for more hours and more work that you do with the client. But we have a couple of tables that we can share on suggested pricing models. Um, I can share it after. Let me see if I can send you the link so you can send it with the email. If not, I can share it afterwards and, and we can share it as well. With Perfect. Anymore. Yeah. Perfect. And I assume somebody who's looking to white label this product and has all these questions that are unique to their agency. There's somebody they can talk to to uh, to walk through this process and get, getting started. Yes, I mean, they can, uh, if they want to reach out to myself, feel free to do so. I think my contact information will be sent afterwards. But either way, if they go to our website, we have a, a lot of landing pages in the partner program. And there's a lot of information that I share here that you can find there and a lot about the model. Um, it's pretty fun when you go into the day-to-day the, the -day scenario and how we manage accounts, the partner portal, the communication, et cetera. Uh, we try to build a pretty comprehensive partner program to make it as easy as possible to enable PPC. So if you want to learn more, feel free to reach out to myself or just go directly to our website and what's your email so we can make sure it's included in the recording. Yeah. F L a at white Perfect. F L a at white shark media.com. Awesome. Well, Francisco, it's been a lot of fun. I, I love these opportunities to be able to chat with, with folks that are very knowledgeable about their product. And, and you definitely come across that way about understanding the solution uh, that we're trying to get to as agency owners. So really appreciate that. Appreciate you being here today and, and talking with us. Uh, great presentation. I think I think everybody got a lot of value out of it.